King Carter, King Carter, King Carter, I pop. King Carter, King Carter. Yo, what's going on team IKC? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. We're about to go over this My Team segment for my NBA 2K15 Wishlist web series. But before I hop into this segment, let me get something off my chest real quick. I need your guys' help. Um, I need you guys to go inside the description, click the first link to App Nana. I want you guys to sign up, put in your email, log in, and put in my invitation code. You guys are actually going to help me open packs when I'm live streaming, also when I'm just making regular videos. So please, Click the first link inside the description. It's going to help me a lot, out a whole lot. Uh, if you guys don't know about App Nana, the video that you guys will be linked to will have all the information you need. Basically, it's going to help me redeem points in order to get PlayStation Store cards so that I can pay for VC without you guys even spending a dollar. So, you know, help me out. But uh, let's hop into the segment real quick, man. Um, you guys got a My Team gameplay in the background, so you guys are definitely going to watch that. And oh, by the way, MJ, overpowered. Let's get into it, y'all. All right, you guys, let's go over My Team mode for NBA 2K15. I'm going to be talking about a few things in My Team mode. Actually, the collections, the managed team, domination, road to the playoffs, tournaments, play with friends, packs, the market, and even a few extra things that we need in My Team. Now, this is not going to be a lot of harsh criticism, but it's going to be a lot of realism. So, uh, the first thing I want to go over is the menu system. Like I said in my previous videos for this web series, they have to fix the menu system. The menus just do not work. It's just too much going on. You really got to dig and find way too much information. And people want it to be easy. So, you know, please fix the menu system. Now, as it goes for the collections. Now, the thing is, for the collections, even if you haven't earned a card, I wish that every single team may it be historic the nba collection rewards i wish that every player card would be available to look at to see who you can earn when you're opening up these packs because what will happen is when you go to open up a pack and there's like a, a, a like for instance a 96 98 bulls card right and you don't have any of those cards in your uh collection the first card that you open will actually open up that pack and actually show you what cards you earn. Whereas though, you know, you might not have wanted to open up that pack because there might not have been the player there that you actually wanted. So I wish that 2K would actually put that inside the entire collection to us where you see everything you can earn. And then you make your decision on if you want to earn from those different collections in historic or 13 14 season or the reward collection that's the way i feel on that now uh the next thing manage team manage team i really don't have that many problems with um as it goes for you know the franchise building up your uh i guess coach and playbook and different jerseys and all of that that's fine that's cool i love to create a new lineup feature where you can have like four or five different lineups and run those different lineups whenever you feel fit to run them but i do have a problem with a certain edit that's inside the game now replacing a player is fine adjusting the lineup is fine but when you go to edit player right and you go down the hill injury i have not seen an injury in my team mode yet 2K, I have a question. What is the significance of these heel cards for five games, full body heels, arm heels, leg? What's the significance of those actual cards? Because me, when I receive those cards and I'm running out of VC, I go to the market and sell them all because I feel as though I do not need them. If there's some type of significance where they're actually needed, let me know. But if anybody else has ever used them, please let me know the situation so I can understand why they make us get these cards in these packs. I feel like if it was that serious, you know, of an injury, maybe they should let us buy the pack for the hills instead of receiving them in a, in a nice little pack opening that we could have used the attribute or signature skill in. I'm just saying. Now, uh, let's talk about signature skills for a moment. Um, I noticed that, you know, when I'm opening packs, 
you really don't get that many signature skills nowadays. You get a lot of attributes and a lot of contracts. I feel like that they should, you know, even out the playing field. Like, for instance, if you open up one pack for Historic Mid or the regular NBA, you should get one contract, one signature skill, one attribute, one card, and one coach or one jersey. That's the way I feel. Heels, I'm still, I still don't like the heels. I, I don't like them. But I think that you should, you know, alternate the coach or the jersey or even the playbook because I, I haven't received that many playbooks either. So, you know, just to, just to stop all the duplicates and everything like that to make things easier, I wish that they would. Now, uh, the attributes, right? Now, I've put on a few different attributes for guys. Um, I think they last like about a game or two. I'm not really sure. I've tried them, but I didn't go back into after I was done the game to see if the card was still there. You know, maybe I need to do that, but um, I do like the attributes because some guys, like for instance, um, when I play with Shaquille O'Neal, beast in the paint, but he does not stand up dunk unless I add an attribute to him. Like, it's, it's so funny how that actually happens, but you know, I like it. Now, contracts, I have no problem with. I just feel like we should uh, raise the cap on how many contracts max you get. Give us a max of, let's see, I would say give us a max of how many actual people we have on our team at that present time. So we have, what, five starters and I think what, uh, let me see, let me look. Five starters and it is seven guys on the bench. So give us 12 max for gold, silver, and bronze. You know, I would like that instead of, you know, only 10. And then, you know, you might run out and be like, ah, oh, the last two guys on the bench are not going to be able to play. So, you know, just just, just for precaution. Um, Now, let's see. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Um, Let's back out. All right, domination. Now, I actually like this tab. Um, when you go into domination, you can actually play up against the computer and win different packs, you know. And also, you earn my team points for actually playing with like poopy te teams. Like, say for instance, you go up against the Utah Jazz and you play with all bronze players. Your your actual point earnings will be very high because you actually beat a team with all bronze players instead of playing them with gold and you only earn like one or two stars so you know that's the way I, I like domination it's not that bad also when you do like beat different tiers it actually feels like you've accomplished something because you know you're playing on a western conference and eastern conference and then you can go into the all-star battles and stuff like that that's pretty dope now uh let's talk about road to the playoffs road to the playoffs still a good mode i like it a lot i just feel like 2K needs to fix the way these lags and these dropped games go. I feel like if a person drops out of a game, that game should be null and void. I think that the players should get their contracts back, and I feel like that neither a win or a loss should go to either person. Now, this is the thing. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what happens when people quit when the fourth quarter comes? Well, let's do it like this. Anything after the third quarter, which means anybody that quits in the fourth quarter, that loss automatically goes to them. But in the first three quarters, it might be a battle. It might be like 45 to 47, you know, and, and a guy mysteriously just drops out of the game and, you know, he doesn't get anything for it. I feel like those type of games, they should be able to be saying, oh, you know what? We're not going to, you know, penalize anybody. But there is that one thing where guys do blow out a lot of people by 20. Now, I don't know if 2K and their servers will actually be able to, you know, check on this or see if that actually happens. But guys that get dubbed and just quit, like, it, they have to somehow put inside some type of code where it actually reads the score before they... Put the win loss because I've seen a lot of guys that dub people and their opponent quits and they back out and they have the loss so you know it's kind of like well what is 2k actually doing here are they reading our wins and losses or are they actually checking the scores or or what what registers when somebody quits you know does the score register does um one player stat line register because you notice when somebody quits and they might quit 10 to 2 
the player of the game would be a person with four points. So if that'll register in a game of 2K, what registers on their servers to tell who went and who lost? I would definitely love to know that, but, you know, a lot of people might not know. But, um, you know, uh, getting the little rewards and the packs and stuff like that when you uh, move on in different tiers, I, I still like them, you know. It should, it should be a little bit more. You should get a little bit more of my team points, but, you know, because you're, you're actually playing head up against guys that are running, like, all go everything. I'm just saying. Um, now, let's talk about the tournament tab. Tournaments are cool. Um, there are a lot of different things you can get in these tournaments, such as um, Ruby Steph Curry, because you guys are actually watching this gameplay of me actually playing to actually get him, and guys like, you know, Diamond Allen Iverson and stuff like that. But my thing is with the tournaments, I feel like where you have the rules and you have all that space under rules, you need to have what the person is actually going to win not an award with you know a little peck just put under there you know you're going to win such and such now these are for those special tournaments such as the golden team everybody looked at it you know when 2k put it out and say you can't play with a point guard they're looking at the golden state warrior pack and they're like oh that's a ruby pack and then everybody knows it's ruby steph curry because of social media but you know there's other joints where you can say for instance here's the question can you win the answer we like how you like um you know you were witty with that but put under there under rules put you will win an Allen iverson or something like that you know give guys incentive to actually play the tournament because people will look at it and be like no nah, i'm not playing five games just to get one card you know or people be like oh, i don't even know what i'm gonna win so i'm just gonna rock out you know and for instance like uh silver tournaments and bronze tournaments and gold tournaments i think you guys should give people way more i mean way more of my team points for that come on for instance let me go let me go back out right i'm gonna go into packs real fast right if you want to open up a Miami Heat team pack, it costs 22,500 my team points. So you're saying if I play five games in a gold tournament, I only win 10,000? Come on, you guys got to up that ante, man. Up at the 25000 for the guys, man. They're playing five games. They're really not getting any real rewards besides a few my team points here and there. And they're playing with all gold players. So, you know, you're not really getting that many things because it's not that much of a reward when you have a big stacked team like that. So, please, you know, give guys a little bit more, man. Come on. Don't don't be holding out on the VC, man. Um, now, the multiplayer tournaments are pretty dope. You know, you can play up against other people to see if you can win certain cards like uh, for instance, one of the uh, 50 greatest of all time, and then you see a Chicago Bulls back. There's another thing. When this actual tournament came out, I wasn't actually playing my team, so I don't know who you win when you get done this tournament. I would have to tweet it out, and somebody would have to tell me that new prior. That's that's what I'm saying. You know, 2K, you got to give guys more information. You know, I like the way you're witty with the words and stuff like that, but you got to give guys more information. Now, the Play With Friends tab. It's cool, you know, you have your locker room and then you invite your friends and all of that. But what is my my player doing there? Like, I know it's the locker room and everything, but like, why can't I have like my team, all the cards, or like my team of five guys standing there, you know, swaying back and forth? Something like how you guys had crews, you know, you had the five players on one side, and then when the game started up, you know, things like that. Why don't you put my five players right there? Why can't I have MJ, JR Smith, Scotty Pippen, Shaquille O'Neal, Hakeem Olajuwon all standing there like, yeah, we ready? You know what I'm saying? With my uniform on. That's that's what I would like to see in my team mode, man. You know, you gotta you gotta make it a little different. You know, you kinda blend everything in from the game and you know you have your my player standing for every little mode. Like that that makes no sense. Now uh, let's talk about these packs, man. Oh boy. For an emerald pack, it costs thirty eight hundred VC, right? And ten thousand two hundred my team points. But for a bronze pack, it costs 3,000 VC, but 13,500 VC, I mean, my team points. That kind of doesn't make any sense to me. Why is it 3,000 more in the my team points, but the Emerald is actually 800 more in VC? You guys have to, you know, kind of level out these packs because, you know, you have different packs that cost different amounts of money. Like, for instance, right, the 76ers pack. 
we know they're, you know, one of the worst teams, if not the worst, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing. But, you know, you have a pack like that for 34 50 right? And then you have a pack that's for the Cavaliers, 6000 That's a big jump. You have the Lakers for 6000 Now, I know it's probably because, hey, you know, you're going to get a reward player like Kobe Bryant, somebody that's actually good. But, you know, you kind of got to level it out because when you think about it, right, for, let's say, for instance, the Portland Trailblazers, they have Damian Lillard and LaMarcus Aldridge in one pack for 6000 right? But the Brooklyn Nets pack costs 10000 where, you know, you got a KG that's on his way out, a Paul Pierce that's on his way out, and, you know, you have Joe Johnson and Darren Williams. Okay, you know, you have two guys that are, like, legit young and could and could beast at any time. But why is that pack 4,000 more than a Portland Trailblazers pack? You know, and, and another thing, with the Miami Heat, their pack costs 10,000. You got Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and LeBron James in that pack. And that pack costs 10,000? So you're saying you compare that pack to a Brooklyn Nets pack? I eh, kind of don't kind of don't weigh like don't have, don't have the same weight, but I see that for a, a Warriors pack is twenty two thousand my team points, but for the Thunder, Knicks, Brooklyn, Spurs, Clippers, and Miami is twenty two five hundred. What does that extra five hundred entitle? What does that actually give you? What is inside that pack that is worth the extra five hundred? It doesn't make any sense. Like, there's a lot of, it's just a lot of packs in here that don't make any sense to me. Like, for instance, when you go to the general pack, you go to the team builder pack, right? It costs 1500 for one bronze player and two items. Cool. But for a bronze pack, it costs 3000 So it's an extra 1500 for an extra two items? Is that what you're telling me? And you don't know if that's an extra player? And then in the silver pack, you jump from 3000 to 6000 That's no problem. I have no problem with that. But what happens when you jump from the silver pack to the gold pack? You jump from 6000 to 13000 What? Like, now I understand the gold pack is going to contain all gold items. But you telling me, instead of adding an extra 3000 like you did from the bronze to the silver... You're gonna like you're gonna add that much to it. It just it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, and then um the historic packs. Oh man, let's talk about the historic packs. Boy oh boy oh boy. Now I noticed that you know um some historic series packs. Most of them all cost thirty four fifty. But when you go into like the actual historic pack for teams, they cost more with you know the players that are in there. But What's up with just generally making historic packs my team points only? Why can't we just say make legend packs only able to be purchased with my team points so that people can't just buy so many amounts of VC to get all these legends? Like, I just feel like, you know, when I come in to buy packs, like, it's cool to drop a 20 spot, get 80,000 VC, and open up a pack. But I really feel like I haven't earned anything. I have not earned one single thing by buying these packs. Like, yeah, I've got the players, but I haven't done anything. I have stacked teams, and I haven't done anything. I'm going to succeed with diamond players, gold players. I haven't done anything. That's all I'm saying. Now, uh, let's move on to the market. The first thing about the market is I feel like you should be able to trade between friends and sell your cards for VC or just my team points. I feel like that that should be something that should be in my team. It's no reason why guys should get all these duplicates and can't sell the people. Like, let them get their money's worth. Come on. And, you know, the current value of certain cards and my team points is just... It's ridiculous, man. Like I went through and went through like um like a for instance a silver Kobe Bryant costs eight thousand and one hundred, right? But uh, like for instance a gold Eddie Jones will cost ten thousand eight hundred. Like that doesn't seem like that's a big jump. 
it's only 2,000 more my team points. And then some players are even lower, you know, in the gold standing. Like, for instance, a gold Tim Duncan costs 8,000, right? Now, let me see if I can find um, my other boy. Let me see. Players. All right. Oh, okay. Now. Uh, 1997 to 1998, gold Tim Duncan cost 13,500 my team points. Like, really? And 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 the funny thing is, all these historic people, they don't have any downside to them. Like, for instance, with the Tim Duncan, he has a downside of his current value that dropped in the 10-game trend. But the historic one, he doesn't have any drop. He's just worth that much. Like, I, it's just... It's something that needs to be tweaked, you know. Like, I think 2K tries to, you know, fill it out and tries to make things, you know, normal to us. But really, it's just some of this stuff is outlandish. But, you know, to talk about classic teams as well, um, I went through, like, my collection and stuff. And I saw that some of the classic guys don't have pictures from them when they were in the NBA. It's actually the game computer generated version of their face. I feel like if somebody is on a classic team and been put in this game, no matter if they were ass or mediocre, or if they were great, they should all have one of their player cards images inside of their pack or collection. Like I don't think that any classic person should have just a computer game generated face. Like please don't don't do that. Also I know that 2K is like the leading NBA game, but they need to dedicate more to basketball fantasy guys. Like, for classic teams, they should have just about every classic team in the game. Now, I know that this is something that, you know, 2K has to do with contracts and all of that, and they have to actually have guys sign contracts. Or if the person is deceased, they have to have people or their people sign off on this. But they should have, like... Crazy people like the 2007 Warriors, 2000 Raptors, 2008 Celtics, 2006 Suns, 2000 Lakers. You know, like, have those different guys on the game. Now, I will say something about the European teams. I noticed that they weren't in next-gen game, but hopefully they will make a return to NBA 2K15. But uh, check this out. What if there were shattered backboard signature skills? What if guys like Shaquille O'Neal, Daryl Dawkins, Chris Morris would be able to have the signature skill to shatter a backboard? Now, this is all in like classic game and my team with classic teams. Like for instance, what if there was a non-breakaway rim for teams that played prior to 1981? So, you know, you have somebody like Wilt just banging and just shattering backboards and non-breakaway rims. Like have that arena look classic. Like, I, I need a classic arena. Like, I need the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? Before they made the adjustments and all of that. Like, that would be so dope to have Dr. J in the spectrum. Like, that would be crazy. Like, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just a big fanatic, man. But what if, like, they had the retro warm-up gear and, like, retro shorts and all of that, like, for teams, you know, back in the day? Like, what if they actually made the classic teams classic? You know, because I've seen a lot of guys, some of them wearing new shorts and stuff like that. Like, come on. It, it just doesn't look right. But uh, what if um, they had the ability, like, for my team to edit, like, your coach name and appearance? Like, what if you could edit, like, a different player? Like, I would, I would, I would like my mob player to be a coach one day, you know, I'm just saying. But I know that that really doesn't make much sense. But, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to throw out a little bit of creativity and you know, customization to it. But uh, also, what if, like, they had more classic player mannerisms? Like, for instance, if the Kembe Mutombo get a block, he do the finger weave. If Sean Kemp do, like, a crazy dunk, he go off. You know what I'm saying? Patrick Hewing, you know, just getting his, his arms raised and getting the crowd pumping. You know, Gary Payton chewing gum all game. Magic Johnson with the no look and smiling and stuff like that. And whatever happened to the Shaquille O'Neal stomp walk? Like, what happened to that? Like, it's so many classic things that they need to implement in this game because they, they have the, uh, what is it called? Uh, I, what is it? Eco motion? 
Yeah, yeah, that's what it's called. It's called eco motion. If they actually had all the eco motion from guys when they were, you know, just starting out in the league in the, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, like that would be crazy. Like all the stuff that used to go on because you notice when MJ goes up for a dunk, he has his tongue out, no problem. MJ doesn't have a problem with having his tongue out, but, you know, other guys don't have that mannerism like, oh, yo, that's really him. You know, we just need some, some extra, you know, animations and stuff like that with the old guys. But, man, I know I, I done drugged you guys along. Uh, <laughs> if there's anything that I've missed or, you know, you want to voice your opinion on, please put it inside the comment section. Um, I forward these videos to 2K. I forward them to the developers. Yeah, this is Siri. Thank you for watching and be sure to like this video. For more videos from this particular mode, click more videos. If you want to see more content from IKC, click subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to follow IKC on Twitter and to like his Facebook page. This is Siri signing out. Peace.